Before we begin, I need to make a public service announcement regarding this video and provide you with an overview of exactly what we'll cover. First off, I know this is a long video. That said, it provides a ton of value and I guarantee you'll pick up a trick or two. But if you're not one for long videos and just want the 10 second summary, then here you go. The main takeaway of this video is that you have the option to wrap certain parts of your widget tree in a repaint boundary widget. This tells Flutter that this part of the tree should be repainted separately from its surrounding parts. In situations where you're making use of widgets with expensive paint phases, then this can give you great performance improvements. Or in situations where only a small part of the screen is visually updating. The repaint boundary is mentioned casually throughout the documentation, but it definitely needs to be promoted more. So this is what this video is. You can also enable the debug repaint rainbow enabled flag to overlay a rotating set of colors that show a visual indication of when widgets are being repainted. This flag should help you identify areas where a repaint boundary may be useful. So that's the summary. If you found that useful and don't care about the long explanation, I would really appreciate a like on the video. But as I said, I believe this video provides a lot of value, so if you have the time, definitely stick to the end. Now, for those of you that are here for the long version, here is an overview for the video. All of these are timestamped as well. Exploring the Flutter timeline and performance tab to identify issues in the paint phase. What is a repaint boundary exactly and why do we even care? Taking a look at the raster cache. Exploring the paint phase further and then the tools to identify when a repaint boundary is useful. Please note that this video is taken from my Flutter animation and performance course. Some parts of the video may refer to other lectures in the course and may at times assume prior knowledge. If you like this content and want to learn how to maximize your application's performance, then check out the full course. The link to the course is in the description and I'll leave a discount code as well. You'll find a lot of value in the course, especially in the performance section, which is packed full of content. That all said, let's start the actual video. I hope you enjoy. In this lecture, we will take a look at repaint boundaries and how we can use them and basically to identify when we should be using them. So if you're not familiar with what a repaint boundary is, then I might just flip your world upside down. As in certain situation, this can drastically improve the performance of your application. And to illustrate this, we will actually steal an example or at least a question that was asked on Stack, uh, Stack Overflow. So this question is regarding this paint application. And the main question was, is why is this one paint layer not being stored in the Flutter raster cache? Because what they are doing is they have a stack with the colorful paints in the back and then at the top of the stack, it's this black dot that follows your finger as you drag, uh, drag across the screen. And as you can see, we have this running over here and you can see that the performance is very, very bad, both on the raster thread and on the UI thread. And the solution for this is very, very simple. And that is to use a repaint boundary. So credit to um, Remy Rousselet, I think I'm saying it wrong, uh, sorry for that. But he provided uh, the answer and gave a good explanation of what a repaint boundary is. So feel free to give this uh, Stack Overflow post a read if you want to. What we will be doing in this video is first explore what exactly is causing this performance issue. And honestly, it's, it's no mystery. Um, if we take a look at the code, you can see that we are doing a ton of different painting. So this is the expensive painter. And you can see that the developer added this print saying doing expensive paint job. And if we actually inspect our um, terminal or our debug console, you can see that every time we drag our finger across the screen, then we are doing this expensive paint job. And also something that I didn't mention is that I am running this application in profile mode at the moment. So this is not a debug build. This is in profile. So this is a close approximation to the performance that we can expect um, if we make this a release build. And as you can see, it is still very poor. But in this example, it's clear what is going wrong. We are constantly calling the paint method again for this custom painter. And before we apply the repaint boundary and see the performance improvements 
that uh, we get, let's quickly explore the timeline as there are a couple of neat things that I would like to show you. So I'm going to say clear track widget builds, show frames, and then let's record a couple of things on the timeline and then stop. And then if we zoom in, you can see that our build call is extremely small compared to the paint. And in all of the previous videos, this was never the case. So clearly something um, suspicious is happening in the paint method. And we are doing a lot, a lot of processing um, in paint. So when we are calling uh, the paint phase, while in the build, all we're doing is just rebuilding that my homepage and the listener. So another way that we can explore this is if we go to the performance tab and let's say record. And I'm just going to play around a little bit on the device. Stop. And now we get our call tree. So we can expect this from the bottom up. And you can see that, yeah, we immediately see paint. So again, just as a refresher, the bottom up shows you the methods that are basically taking up the most time in our application. And no surprise, we also see draw circle. And if we take a look at the source code, you can see that, yeah, we are making a lot of different um, circles to make that custom paint. And we can also expect this in the CPU flame chart. So same thing. This is just the flame chart version. We can see a lot of different paints and paint childs. And at some point we should also see the draw circle. Yes, here you can see we have draw circle over here. So just a little bit of a bonus tip to show you how you can profile in uh, this application in this particular instance. And also to basically tell you that if you ever do see a lot of these paint calls on or in your timeline, or if you track your performance like this, then that is a good indication that you might benefit from using a repaint boundary. And if you stick to the end of this video, we will explore another way that we can semi-track if a repaint boundary might be a suitable solution. But enough of the uh, big talk, or not big talk, but enough talking, let's actually add the repaint boundary and see the benefits that we get. So if we go to the stack, then we will wrap our custom paint, so this expensive painter, in a repaint boundary. So let's do that. And I will explain what a repaint boundary is more in a moment. First, let's, let's just get it working and observe the difference. So I'm going to stop the application and I'm just going to rebuild it. Again, this is in profile mode and we are building to an actual device. So the moment of truth, let's see if there are any benefits. And yeah, there you go. At the beginning, there was a little bit of cost basically to, um, I would assume to cache the image, but then after that, it's smooth going all along. And if we were to inspect the application in DevTools, you will see that nothing suspicious is happening. And the only pain calls that we're seeing are the, well, is this little black dot that we're dragging across the screen. So I hope this made you excited and that you can potentially see the possibilities of this. And if this is the first time that you're hearing about this, you might even be wondering why is this the first time? As it is actually not a fairly well-known widget. And with that said, we will go into the second part of this video and actually explore the repaint boundary a bit more and um, discuss exactly what is happening. And for that, we will actually go back to our emulator and then we will do some debugging. Okay, so we have our application running in debug in the emulator. And let's actually discuss what is happening. So the easiest way to think about a repaint boundary is essentially a separation between different layers. And technically, that is not the correct terminology. However, that is how I like to think about it. And we will discuss the correct terminology in a moment. But imagine a program like Photoshop or a different image editor or painting program. For those programs, you would have multiple different layers. 
and you can affect one layer without affecting another one. And that is essentially what a repaint boundary does. It isolates the different objects or the different um, widgets into its own layer. So performing changes in that layer will only cause the engine to repaint everything that is within that repaint boundary. And in this example, we have a stack and then in the stack in the background or the first um, widget in the stack is this custom painter. And then on top of that, we have this uh, listener, which is also a custom painter. And this is the, the dot that we're painting. And if we do not apply a repaint boundary, Flutter essentially sees everything that is on the screen as a single layer. So every time we update the top layer over here, it would also cause Flutter to update this one or to repaint um, the stuff that is below it. The same would occur if we were doing an animation, for example. And we will explore that in a moment. So let's take a look at the documentation for a repaint boundary. And in the documentation, they say a repaint boundary is a widget that creates a separate display list for its children. So what is a display list? Well, in some ways, the display list is what I just described as being a layer. And if we look at the Wikipedia description, a display list is a series of graphics uh, commands that define an output image. And in the world of Flutter, the graphic commands would basically be the widgets that we create. And those widgets create their own render objects. And those render objects handle the painting to the screen. So for most widgets, we don't handle painting. However, those widgets do still need to be painted to the, to the screen. And that is managed by the render object. Or alternatively, if we use something like a custom painter as the example, then we are handling uh, the painting to the screen. So the graphical commands that we are creating are those paint instructions. And if we understand that, then this sentence makes uh, perfect sense and it describes exactly what we saw in the example. So as you can see, they say that the widget creates a separate display list for its child, which can improve performance if the subtree repaints at different times than the surrounding parts of the tree. And if we go back to our source code, we need to understand that all of this is in the same widget tree. However, once we wrap a widget in a repaint boundary, it tells the framework that, hey, listen, this should be a different tree that handles its own painting. So when we do a paint in this part of the tree, that paint operation won't go back all the way up to the tree and affect this particular widget or cause this widget to also repaint. And as you can see, they say this is useful since the render object dot paint may be triggered even if it's associated widget instances that not change or rebuild. So just to make sure there are no confusion, this is not just relevant when you use a custom painter, it can benefit if you use normal widgets as well, as those widgets have their own painting calls in the form of calling render object dot paint, as we can see here. So now the question is, why do we need to do this? Why can't Flutter be smart enough to do this by itself? And the answer is that technically it can. There are times when it might uh, decide to actually cache a part of the tree. And I definitely suggest you read this section in the performance section of um, the documentation, the documentation that is Flutter performance profiling. Here they go into a lot of detail discussing a variety of different performance considerations. And throughout this section, we will be referring to this. And in particular, the section discussing the checking for non-cached images is relevant to this particular lecture. The main thing to take note of is that caching an image or a widget that requires um, a lot of computation and it is expensive. So as you can see, they say because raster cache entries are expensive to construct and takes up loads of C uh, GPU memory, cache images only where absolutely necessary. And Flutter provides a way for us to sh see what um, caches are currently being made. So what widgets or images are 
currently being cached by the engine. And that flag is the checkerboard raster cache images. So let's actually explore that. So we're going to jump back to the code. And then I'm going to make this true. So this checkerboard raster cache images, we're going to set that to true and then just do a hot restart or a restart. And now you can see that as we're making changes to the application, everything is um, basically overlaid with this um, checkerboard. And you can even note that the debug label also has its own checkerboard at the top there. And what we want to take note of is to make sure that the checkerboard or the border doesn't change um, values because that would indicate that they are being recached. And as we mentioned, um, caching a widget or caching an image is an expensive operation. So we want to cache static images that are not going to be changing. So in this instance, this background that we have, that is a perfect um, place where we can cache something because we know it's expensive and we saw the benefits of using the repaint boundary. So now the question is, how do we cache it? And you might guess that is by using the repaint boundary. And I also mentioned that Flutter might sometimes choose to cache by itself. However, in this particular instance, that is not the case. If we were to remove uh, this widget and re restart, you will see that Flutter does not cache this. It does in fact cache the debug label over here. But in this particular instance, we know that we want to cache this painting. So we can just wrap it in a repaint boundary. And that will tell Flutter that, hey, listen, you should be caching this. And again, now we will see the checker boxes that are being overlaid. So fantastic. And as a last little demo, I made a small little animation. So we have this button and this animated container and we're just animating the size. And that is just to also demonstrate that if we were to do an animation over a different layer, then we will also get the performance benefits of caching or by applying a repaint boundary to the static parts of our widget tree that are not changing. And if we set the checkered board raster cache images to true, what we want to see is the following. We want to run the app and look for images rendered with a randomly colored checkerboard, as we saw in the application. And then this indicates that the image is cached. And as you interact with the scene, the checkerboarded images should remain constant. You don't want to see flickering, which would indicate that the cached image is being recached. So that is the important thing. We don't want to see any flickering. Because caching is an expensive operation, if we see flickering, that means that the same image is being recached again. So in most cases, you want to see checkerboards on static images, but not on non-static images. And as we saw, if a static image isn't cached, you can cache it by placing it in a repaint boundary. However, note that the engine might still ignore a repaint boundary if it thinks the image isn't complex enough. So that is just something to take note of. So now that we have introduced the concept of a repaint boundary, we're going to explore the painting phase a little bit more and get a better idea of when a repaint boundary can be useful. And to assist us with this, we will make use of the Dart dev tools as well as a couple of additional flags that we can set. And I've made this example application that has a list view and then it has an animate button and it has this increment button that doesn't increment for this number. And then we have this static text at the top. So let's begin and I'm gonna open the dev tools. And then we're also gonna set a flag. The flag that we're gonna set is the debug profile paints enabled. And we've seen a similar flag before. We've um, actually used the debug profile builds in previous videos, set it to true in our code. Instead, we actually did this in the timeline. So when we say this track widget builds, that is actually just setting the debug flag. That is this one, the debug profile builds enabled. And just as we have this flag, we also have the same for paints. So this will give us more information on the painting phase. So let me explain that. If we um, remove it for now, do a hot restart, and let's do a record. 
and I'm just going to tap the increment a couple of times and then it's a stop and if we explore the timeline you can see that we have the painting phase however it doesn't give us any more information it just says that this was the painting phase and it took this long and what the flag does is it will give us more information so now we would actually need to do a hot restart so now if we do another record we should see some more information and now you can see that we are getting all of the methods that were called in the painting phase so this will give us a bit of an idea of exactly what widgets or what render boxes or render objects I should say are being repainted so let's jump back to the code and I want to explain a couple of things in this application so you can see that we have a list view over here and I think to note about flutter is that by default flutter adds a repaint boundary around a list and that is because adding a repaint boundary makes a lot of sense when you scroll in a list it is only the list that will actually change none of these other widgets need to be repainted and flutter has a nice debug tool that allows us to visualize this so if we go to the flutter inspector there is this flag that we can enable called repaint boundary so what this will do is it will show a flickering rainbow or it will basically overlay all of the widgets with a different color to show when a certain layer is being repainted so as i said this list is wrapped in its own repaint boundary so if we do a scroll now you can see that we get these colors over here and that is to indicate that this is wrapped in its own repaint boundary however we do not see any flickering colors anywhere else in the application so making a change here forming a repaint in this list view does not cause a repaint in all of the other widgets and if we were to track what i just said in the timeline that is what we would observe as well so in a moment we will actually jump back to the timeline and explore that a bit more but for now let's see what happens if we do a animation so this animation will actually just increase the size of this container so this red container and the thing to note about the code is that this container is wrapped so by this container i mean this red box is wrapped in another container that has a yellow color so this is the main container and that container has a repaint boundary so i specified that this should use a repaint boundary so what this means is whenever we perform a repaint for any of these child widgets that will result in all of these widgets that are within this repaint boundary also repainting and if we tap the animate that is what we will see you will see that we have this varying repaint and these different colors that are changing as the animation occurs or as flutter repaints all of the widgets and this holds true even if we just want to update the text as you see as i'm tapping the text it causes all of the um, widgets to repaint as indicated by the changing colors and to verify this let's actually explore it on the timeline as well so i'm just going to record and then let's tap the increment button a couple of times and then stop and now if we take a look at one of these uh, phases we can see that we are repainting uh, quite a lot i believe this one with the render ink features is probably the button that we're repainting and here we're repainting a decorated box or a constrained box and you get the idea and we will see the same repainting happening for all of these different animation frames and the reason that we're seeing so many animation frames is because we are doing an animation when we're tapping this animate button and that will cause a repaint because we need to animate this ripple effect that you can see on the button so this is just a way that you can use the debug rainbow to help you visualize when changes occur in a certain layer there is another flag that you can set if you wanted to set this manually so instead of going over here in flutter inspector and, and setting the repaint rainbow you can also set this in your code by setting the debug repaint rainbow enabled to true 
And another flag that we can set is the debug paint layer borders enabled. So I'm going to set this to true and let's just remove the repaint uh, rainbow for now. And we can also do a hot restart so that this is a take well at least that this will take effect because we need to call main again and now you can see that we have these borders across all of the different places where we apply a repaint boundary so this indicates the separate layers in the application so for example if we were to wrap the text widget in a repaint boundary we should see that that now also has a separate layer and we can see that over here, the exploring paint, now it's its own separate layer. So now the question is, when should we apply repaint boundaries? Because if we apply a repaint boundary, we inadvertently cause Flutter to use more memory. Because every time we introduce a repaint boundary, it will cause Flutter to use additional memory because more information needs to be cached. And on a native iOS and Android application, the two platforms take a very different approach. For an iOS application where they control their hardware and their software and where they know how much memory they have available, it's easier to say, yeah, we can just cache everything. However, on Android, they take a different approach. Memory may be limited on certain devices. So in those instances, it will be better to redraw everything on every frame as opposed to excessively caching and using too much memory. And Flutter takes a middle approach. It essentially tells you as the developer, you know your application and you need to decide when to introduce a repaint boundary. And for simple applications like we see over here, where Flutter will only repaint the text as an example every time we press an increment button, then it's not an issue. Then we can redraw everything on every single frame. There is no real need to cache everything. But on the other hand, for something like a list view, there will always be a benefit to cache a scrolling list because only the list needs to change. The other layouts definitely do not need to repaint if the list is scrolling. So the introduction of a repaint boundary is entirely up to you. You should definitely not be adding a repaint boundary to every single widget. However, if only a small part of the screen is updating and the rest is static, then in that instance, it would make a lot of sense to add a repaint boundary. Or if you're doing very complicated operations like we saw in the beginning of this video, where we want to definitely avoid performing repaints, then again, a repaint boundary is extremely useful. And the Flutter Toolkit provides some debug information to make you identify if a repaint boundary is actually useful, if it actually was worth it for you to add that repaint boundary in that location of the widget tree. And you can get this information by enabling some debug prints as well. I will provide information in the description of this lecture. However, the easiest way to get this data is in Android Studio. So in Android Studio, we're running the exact same application. So in the Flutter inspector, we can see we have our widget tree and our render tree. And if we take a look at this repaint boundary as an example, so this is the repaint boundary that is added over the text. Then we can click it. And then if we click the render tree, it will automatically take us to the location of the repaint boundary. And this will give us some additional information. So if we, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. If we open up the values, we can see that we get a lot of uh, different statistics. And here we have a metrics. And this says that it has currently been 0% useful. So the bad indicates how many times it had to be repainted as opposed to the times that it didn't have to repaint, be repainted. However, other parts of the tree did repaint. So if we bring up the application and let's do the animates. So now a lot of repaints are happening and let's just refresh the tree. We can see that it's still 0% useful. Nothing has changed. And the reason for that is because this repaint boundary will never have an effect on this part of the tree because this part of the tree is already wrapped in a repaint boundary. The repaint boundary for this one is this one over here. And if we actually take a look at that repaint boundary, so the repaint boundary over this yellow container, and we take a look at those metrics, 
we can see that it has been 99.5% useful. So it's only one bad versus 219 good. So the diagnosis is that this is an outstandingly useful repaint boundary and should definitely be kept. As opposed to the other repaint boundary, it said that insufficient data to draw conclusions. But that said, we know that this repaint boundary is technically redundant because a repaint will never be triggered because of the other repaint boundaries that we have already added. And then finally, in the actual list view, if we take a look at the list view and then take a look at the render tree, then we can see that this is uh, has its own repaint boundary as well. And I believe it's actually not this one. I think it's this one, the render repaint boundary over here. So that is that for this lecture. It was a lot of information. And at the end, it's very hard to give clear indications of when you should use a repaint boundary. In the beginning of the lecture, we saw a great example when a repaint boundary was very useful. And then the later examples, some of them were definitely not useful and were redundant. But that said, you know your application better than anyone else. And Flutter allows you to add these repaint boundaries whenever needed. In some cases, adding a repaint boundary will show great performance improvements. And in other instances, it may be minimal. But you can use the Flutter tools and profiling tools to determine if a repaint boundary will benefit your application in a certain location.